Hey guys, got a little question for you. Is anyone in your family share a birth date with a grandparent or a great grandparent or an aunt or uncle or even have kids that share the same birth date, you know, many years apart or a couple of years apart? Let me know in a comment below because I'm trying to do a little bit of research on this. It's kind of blowing my mind. You guys know that I'm researching the family history and I don't know a whole lot beyond great grandparents, so I'm using all the online tools like Find a Grave, and then you can see where people are buried, and you can see from there you can figure out all their family members, and you can figure out their date of death and who their family members were, and you go through ancestry, and this is just kind of how you unravel it, right? Beyond great grandparents, I don't know. But I was talking to my aunt, who also does a lot of family research, and she said, Well, did you know that? Uh, your great-grandmother's mother, so my great-great-grandmother, was a twin. I said, no, I didn't know that. That was my grandmother, uh, Ruby Winch, okay? And she died when I was pretty young, maybe five or six. I do remember her. White-haired lady with big boobs and the friendliest woman. <laughs> yes, she did have big boobs. Uh, she did. She was the friendliest woman and my grandfather. You guys have seen a picture of my grandfather, Gordon. Uh, I'll put that picture back up here. He's the one, you know, standing with the axe on his shoulder. When I was a little kid, four or five years old, he would get down on the floor and wrestle with us. And my grandmother, Ruby, I remember her yelling at him, Gordon, you're going to hurt yourself. He had a bad heart. I didn't know that when I was a kid, right? But he would get down on the floor and he would wrestle with Grant and I. And uh, it was my grandmother, Ruby's mother, who was a twin. And my aunt told me yesterday, she said, did you know that their birthday was May 6th? That's my birthday. I'm a twin. And I thought, wow, that's weird. And then Aunt Angie said, yeah, she said, it must be pretty common. She said, because her firstborn son, Scott, also shares his grandfather's birthday. And I thought, no, this is weird. Because if you do some quick math, guys, there's 365 days in the year right? So 364 of those days, you would not share the same birthday. So 364 divided by 365 gives you your percentage chance of sharing a birthday with someone. And guess what? It's like 97% chance that you won't share the same birthday. So I thought that's weird that there's not only Grant and I, because we're twins, I thought that was weird, but then my aunt's telling about me about Scott. Last night, I also took my mom out for dinner, and I mentioned this weird coincidence to her. And she says to me, oh yeah, she says that my sister also has a birthday on the same day as one of our great-grandparents, July 2nd. And I'm like, this is just getting, this is crazy. So there are three incidents right there that I know of. There may even be more in my own family where successive generations are being born on the same day. And then my phone just rang while I was recording that bit for you guys, and it was Grant, and I was telling him about these coincidence of same birthdays. And he says, well, my grandmother also lost twins. Um, so she would have been much older in her early 40s. And guess what? The twins would have been born on May 5th. So one day before my birthday. So what does that mean? Now, I mean, again, that's not the same day. But again, I don't know if this has something to do with reincarnation, guys. I don't know if I believe in reincarnation. It's absolutely 100% a possibility. I think there's a, a good chance that it's a real thing, reincarnation. Yeah, I mean, I believe in the possibility of it. Sure, 100% believe in the possibility of it. I don't know that it's real. don't know what I think about that. Uh, but it's... It seems like more than a coincidence, right? And then Grant threw that out, and I very vaguely do remember something about that. So, yeah, there's more to this. You guys comment below, and let's see how many of your families out there have this strange coincidence with birthdays. Comment below. I'm going to do some research on this. Hmm. So, trying to look up information on, you know, birth dates... And what it means, and everything keeps looping back to reincarnation in the research and the reading that I'm doing here. So um, I started reading about reincarnation and, you know, all the signs and things that you can experience if 
you've been reincarnated. And some of it kind of makes sense. You know, they talk about deja vu. You know, the sense of having done or been somewhere before in an exact circumstance. And I have had that a few times. I've told you guys on the channel about that. Um, went to a concert when I was a kid. My very first concert ever. And I looked over at my buddy who brought me and I said, it's not the same as last time. And he's like, oh, what are you talking about? You told me you'd never been to a concert. And I'm like, I haven't. And he's like, well, what are you talking about? And I'm like, I don't know. It's just not the same. And honestly, I guys, it was the strangest, weirdest thing for me to blurt out. And, I, <laughs> and then another time that that happened was uh, I was hiking the trails and I was overlooking this beautiful vista. And I went, reached down to grab my camera at my side and take a picture. And I was like, no, this isn't right. This isn't the right camera. And um, it was very super strange. So I never even took a picture, which was even weirder. I just walked home. There I am wanting to take a picture. I've got a camera in my hand and I didn't do it. And literally, two weeks later, I uh, happened into some extra money, not even thinking about that incident, and I purchased a new camera. And within a few days, I was back at that exact same spot, overlooking the same beautiful vista, and I was like, oh my god, this is what... And I reached down, brought up the new camera, and realized now it was right and I could take the picture. I know it sounds freaking strange and weird guys i wasn't meant to take the picture with that other camera and lens it wasn't the right one and i didn't think of any of that until i got back there with the second camera and then it hit me and i was like oh man this makes no sense but it happened so i mean deja vu another thing is precognition and i've had that a couple of times as well guys where i knew things that were going to happen before they happened and I've told you guys about that on the channel before. I had a hockey game with my dad, feeling sick as a kid. The third period ends, the game is a tie. And I'm telling my dad, we gotta go, I don't feel good. And he says, we can't, we you know, we made it to overtime, we've gotta see who wins the game. And I looked at him, and I said, Dennis Bonby's gonna score two minutes into overtime, let's go. And uh, <laughs> that's exactly what happened. And Dennis Bonby was a fighter for the North Face Centennials. He was not a guy who scored goals. And my dad looked at me like, almost like he was afraid of me. He's like, what just happened? He was like, but we got to leave. Uh, didn't have to wait too long, two minutes into overtime. So again, I, and again, I don't know how I blurted that out, how I knew that. I just felt sick. I wanted to get out of there. And I knew that. And I told him. So again, weird. And it just makes me wonder about this whole reincarnation thing what would the purpose be um and thinking about reincarnation is making me think about consciousness in general okay stick with me guys i have a point here consciousness in general what would the point of coming back repeatedly over and over unless it's something to just uh you know, if we're all-knowing and all-seeing and all-powerful on the other side, why would I have to come here to learn life lessons if I already know to be a good person and how to be a good person and what I want when I'm on the other side because there's clarity and everything is there? To me, it screams like this is just some kind of game or adventure or a vacation and makes you appreciate home when you go back to the other side because it's so terrible here. You know, that's what I think. That's what I'm, when I'm, when I think about this. Now, consciousness tied into that. I'm going to tell you guys something that I argued with a university professor. Um, evolutionary biology professor that I had. I loved evolutionary biology, okay? Because back in the day, I didn't believe in creation. Didn't believe in God. Didn't want to, I, I believed in Something else, as I said, very spiritual ever since the time I was a little kid. I've talked to dead relatives and whatever, and I don't—I know that makes no sense. I believe in spirits and energy and all that stuff, but I didn't really believe in a God, an all-creator. And as time goes on, you know, you guys know I've gone through this midlife spiritual something that happened, and, and I've changed over time, over the course of about 10 years. And... There is something. There's more to this. There is a greater power, 
right? And I feel like I've said to you guys, like I'm just I kind of give into it at this point, and I just what will be will be because you can't fight that. There is, you know, you can ask for help and assistance, and I think we do get signs and things that pop up all the time in our lives that point us in the right direction, especially if you're looking for help or asking for help. I don't know what to do with this decision. Should I take this job? Should I move here? Should I go to school here? Should I, you know, and, and we all ask the universe for help in times like that, whether we know it or not. And bam, you get a sign that says, you know, it's something you just can't ignore. Yeah, that's going to be an awesome job. Go do it, you know, or, or whatever. Maybe not. Don't move there That in this case, you know, whatever it is, we all get a sign and we get an answer. And we always just kind of chalk it up as, oh, gee, that was strange or coincidental. And I've told you guys about, you know, my own personal story. Talking to Jim, moving to a place that I didn't know I should have moved. Walked down the street. Talking to Jim in the pouring rain. So frustrated and confused, like beyond having an answer. Could not come to the answer myself of, are we doing the right thing? And uh, I asked Jim for a sign. And Jim had always said carpe diem, right? Seize the day. And that was written on his binder in college when we met him. And I walked past this for sale sign of a house. And I walked two mile loop. Talking to Jim in the pouring rain. You know, can you give me a sign, buddy? Are we supposed to be here? Is this right? And when I came back up the street in neon orange lettering on the back of that for sale sign... Carpe diem. <laughs> I couldn't ignore it. It was like, yeah, everything's going to be fine, man. You're where you're supposed to be. That's, I knew it as soon as I read that. And the hair on the back of my neck just went up when I said that. You know, so back to my thing of consciousness. If I truly believe that we can communicate and receive messages and things from people that have passed, that they still care about us, that they're still watching and enjoying our soap opera drama down here, our lives... I have another thing that I'm I'm kind of toying with that I've been struggling with since evolutionary biology, and that is that consciousness does not reside in the brain. You know, we talk about instinct, mother's instinct, basic instinct. When creatures are born, they know how to do certain things. Bees, for example, I'll just give you guys this example. Every hive has two queen bees. Okay, so when this brand new queen bee is born, it knows that immediately it has to crawl through the hive, it knows where to go, and it has to kill the second queen bee. Whichever one hatches first is going to be the queen for that hive. How would any creature that's just been born know that? That means that there has to be a residual memory of what to do, right? It makes no sense if you break that down. And there are a million examples of instinct okay and it all to me points to the fact that we're drawing information from somewhere outside of local consciousness you talk about some of the greatest inventions that were ever made by nikola tesla and other people they flat out said hey this came to me in a dream or i was told this via communication from somewhere else. Uh, some of the greatest mathematicians in the world say they get their information from somewhere else. It's like a greater consciousness sharing with us that some people can tap into. Creativity, I believe, comes from this other place. And so for a long time, I've toyed with this idea that consciousness does not reside in the brain. It resides somewhere else. You know, and this could also explain near-death experiences and things like that. Like, you never really were inside your own head, right? So when you die, people boop, pop out of their body. You know, you weren't there. You really weren't in your body. I don't know. I don't know how to explain it. There's so much stuff that goes on. Weirdness. And it's all stemming back from this shared birth date thing that I've stumbled upon in the family. Let me know what you guys think about all of this. You know, there's, there's a few topics there that I'm just very gently touching on.
that there's some pretty deep stuff there. You know, we're talking reincarnation. We're talking local consciousness versus uh, external greater consciousness. What is the point of reincarnation? There are so many things that are go beyond even, you know, religion It would be the most shallow level of what we're talking about. Spirituality would be the next level down. And then there's something even below that that I don't even know what to call that. What is that third level called? I don't know. I, had, I don't read enough books on this. Deepak Chopra maybe has covered this. Guys, if you know some books or good reading for me to get into those deeper levels and figure out what is it all about? I guess that's what I'm trying to figure out on a cold winter day sitting here. You know, if we could put the pieces together of how this works, then maybe you can figure out what it's all about. <laughs> Why? I honestly feel like, you know, I'm... I'm I'm not new to this game, whatever it is. I can't prove any of that, but I can tell you guys I'm not a newbie. This isn't my first time. If here is a place that we come to, it's not the first time that I've been here. Some of my earliest memories are questioning, you know, as a small child, how did I get here? What am I doing here? Even if there isn't more of a point to this, other than just you're here, you procreate, you create the next generation and you move on, which is what biologists and evolutionary biologists will tell you, right? It's all about procreation. Uh, then you still have to look at the whole experience and say, even if I'm only ever going to be here once, I wasn't any conscious anything before conception. Then I became conscious and then my conscious light is going to go out when I die, then in that case, you'd still have to say, damn, I want to do the most that I can do while I'm here. I want to be the best. I want to see the most. I want to... There is nothing that's going to stop me from getting the most out of this. That's how you have to look at it. You can get caught up in all of these little issues and problems of I got bills to pay, I got groceries to get, I got a driveway to snowplow. But really, none of that means anything. Yeah, it's all part of the experience, part of being. But if Gary really didn't want to put up with that, Gary could just say, oh, I'm going to sell my house and move somewhere else. Where am I going to go? Not Alabama. But anywhere else, I don't, I, I don't know why not Alabama. I just don't ever feel I need to go to Alabama. <laughs> I do play banjo. Just a little bit. So, I don't know. I'm just sitting here contemplating all this deep stuff. And, uh... There's, there's more to... Every instinct in my brain tells me there's more to this. Don't get too caught up in the everyday stuff. I already... I've known that. We've talked about that, guys. And I'll never be able to change your minds. Only you can change the way you feel and think about the everyday happenings, you know. Only you can stop yourself from getting too worked up over, you know. And I just, I, I want everybody to think on a deeper level. There is more to this that's going on here. And the closest thing I can relate this to is just like uh, the movie Total Recall, where he goes on vacation, right? Arnold Schwarzenegger books that vacation package because in the future you can be anyone you want and have any adventure you want. And the whole movie, you don't really know, is it real, is it not? Because he's fighting the, the corporation, the Mars Corporation, and... Uh, is he really there? Is he really an agent fighting them? Or is that just the vacation that he picked? We don't know, right? Total Recall. This is, this is a case of Total Recall. Let me know what you guys think in the comments below.